Welcome to the guide at Fish North Georgia. Brought to you by these fine sponsors. Spro, working with America's best anglers to design the world's finest fishing tackle. Nichols Lures, handcrafted to perfection. Georgia Blade, makers of premium fishing lures for over three decades and home to the Georgia Jig. Crypto Bass, tournament grade, Georgia made. And be sure to visit fishnorthgeorgia.com. And now here's Charles Ashley Shellnut. Hey guys, I'm Charles Ashley Shelnut with the guide at Fish North Georgia. Uh, I'm coming to you for a fishing report for Lake Sinclair. Um, it's February the 20th when I was out there. Today is the February 22nd of 2021. And um, I was kind of going to go over my day out there. We had a kayak tournament out there with Georgia Kayak Fishing League. Um, one of the co-directors of uh, Georgia Kayak Fishing League. So if... Um, if you're interested in Georgia Kayak Fishing League, just uh, stay tuned to the end of the page, uh, to the end of the video here. Um, I'm just going to go over a few things throughout my day. I started the day with a crankbait. The water temperatures were 45 to 47 degrees starting off in the morning um, in the area I chose to fish. Most of the lake was kind of muddy. Um, the area I found had some pretty good visibility to it probably two foot um it did have a lot of stained water it was fairly silty but it you could see down pretty good um so i chose to start with the crankbait around the rip wrap didn't have no luck immediately kind of switched over to the jig because you got to get bites in the tournament and um i was going for bigger fish anyway i was just kind of picking up a trying to pick up a few off the crankbait, but it wasn't happening. So I reached back and I grabbed my uh, football jig here. It's in a green pumpkin red with a red back on it. I got a uh, bone colored um, bud, uh, bed bug here with a green pumpkin red front or red top on it. Anyway, I was uh, chunking this guy around the boat docks uh, the pilings and everything and I had a bite pretty quickly um, set the hook and fought her about halfway to the boat and she just come unpegged so I moved on from there and kept kind of doing the same thing for a little while um, fishing kind of close to deep water but fishing shallow shells um, shell beds and uh, things like that that were close to some dock pilings some harder bottoms and then things like that so I did it for about another hour without any luck and uh, I started thinking that I kind of needed to cover a little bit more water than individually pitching each one of these docks when it went uh, pylons when it wasn't working so um, I switched to a Texas rig and I moved further back off the dock and started paralleling those boat docks with the Texas rig and you know I, you could use probably any crawl dad because I think they're definitely just kind of on crawls right now because of the water temperatures are pretty cold. Um, it did warm up to about 50 degrees during the tournament, but like I said, when we started, it was 45, 47 degrees. So uh, I went to a Zoom Z crawl here in a South African color. And I chunked it on a 3 8 ounce tungsten weight. And uh, like I said, I was just paralleling those boat docks. And I started to immediately get in bites. And I was able to capitalize on a smaller fish and get her in the boat. And get her pitcher and put her back in the water. And had a few other bites that really didn't take the bait. And set the hook that kind of went in there. And um, was sitting here fishing in this one dock. And come across the second to the last pile and then my line just went boom and I know exactly what that was I mean when the big girls mouths open up and that you know that it's that like vacuum cleaners and just thud that bait to the back of the throat and immediately when I felt that I knew it was a big fish and that close to the dock I had to set the hook and get her you know try to get her away from the dock as fast as I could and um so I set the hook on her and she just you could just feel the weight of this fish man I mean it was a really big fish and 
with the water clarity, she started to come up and I was able to see her and I was like, oh my goodness, this is like a 10 pound fish, no doubt. And she just rolled. Uh, she didn't come to the top. She was still back down about a foot under the water and she just rolled and beeline straight toward the boat dock. And I mean, it was the last boat piling, boat dock piling and she hit that sucker and just broke the line. After that, I would have been in open water with her, but you know how that goes. I mean, I, in a tournament to get that bite and not be able to capitalize on it, it was pretty heartbreaking. Um, but, you know, you have to just retie and keep chunking. So that's what I did. I retied and I kept throwing the Z crawl and I knew I had, had got, you know, had something kind of going on. I was on a transition bank with the, um, you know, a transition slope as well. So these fish could pretty much set up wherever they wanted to on whatever piling they wanted th to throughout the day. And we had bluebird skies that day and they ain't seen sun in a while, you know, and this wood is going to warm up quicker. The uh, rocks that are kind of around the dot pilings and stuff's going to warm up quicker. These shell beds and hard bottoms, they're going to want to kind of cling to. So I rolled with that and kept chunking it, kept getting bites. Um, ended up getting another fish in the boat. Um, about an hour left in the tournament and I hook up on another fish out in front of the boat docks cause there was, the sun was setting up a little different throughout the day and the front of the dock started getting some of the more of the shade. And um, I, kn I knew a lot of those fish kind of just wanted to still kind of be out in front of those docks staged up too. So I was spend a little bit of time on those as I was going around the dock as well. And um, I was able to capitalize on a few bites, but um the last bite an hour you know i set the hook and the bait just balls up on the hook and didn't get good penetration on her so had to come in on the end of the day um but what i took out of it you know is the big girls are coming in um prepare for that uh you know the, the pre-spawn urge to the bank to get some food and get you know fed up and ready for this spawn and um there are big fish in Sinclair. Don't be fooled. But uh, I just wanted to go over a little few things about myself and a few things that we have coming up. As um, far as Georgia Kayak Fishing League, we have the um, uh, next tournament in March 27th at Lake Lanier. And um, this weekend I'm headed to Seminole to fish the Peach State Kayak Angler Tournament. So be on the lookout for a uh, fishing report down there as well and should be under some good spawn pre-spawn conditions going on down there so everything's going to be warming up and the weather looks good so be on the outlook for that and um be on the go to the georgia cat fishing league page and um check us out there and go to the member page and uh hit that like button and um, be on the lookout for our future events as, with that. But um, I will see you next time. Like I said, this is the guy at Fish North Georgia, and I'm Charles Ashley Shellnut. And uh, like I said, it's more nuts than shells. S H E L N U T T. Y'all have a good night. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching the guide here at Fish North Georgia. Our mission is to build a community of anglers to give you the best and latest information to make your day on the water more successful. Make sure you subscribe to our channel, click the bell so you'll be notified of any future content. Make sure you check us out at fishnorthgeorgia.com where we carry a large variety of bait manufacturers from here in the North Georgia area. So we appreciate you being part of our community and we'll see you soon.